Hello, I'm Seth with Land the House. Out in the shop again where it's a balmy 20 degrees. If you hear a hum, I've got the heater going. Previously, we pulled the Archimedes turbine out of the creek and brought it here into the shop where it is sitting on my workbench. Uh, if you missed that video or the videos from four years ago, I purchased a farming auger and put it inside of a six inch pipe. And the idea was place this in the creek at a certain angle, water would pour into the auger from either this side or this side, didn't really matter. And that water would um, weigh down that auger and turn it. And so as it turned, it would um, turn the shaft and uh, run a pulley system with a motor such as, I don't think you'll even be able to see it, but there's a treadmill motor down there that I was considering. Um, anyway, it would generate electricity. Um, so the water would come down here and then just exit out of this side. But um, the problem was I got distracted and uh, never finished the project. So it's time to get back out here and work on this some more. Uh, so the plan is um, to reduce the friction loss that is happening in here. Um, I have already removed the, uh, the hardware from these flange uh, fittings here. Uh, I need to pull that off, pull the auger out, and the plan is to um, come up to a couple inches above this T and cut and split this pipe and maybe uh, use some kind of spacers to open it up just a little bit so that that auger is not um, hitting. Uh, let's see if we can, if I can spin this so you can hear it. Yeah, anyway, there's a lot of uh, friction happening in there that is no good for um, the application we're using. So, uh, I was doing a little bit of research and a couple of commenters backed me up on this. Uh, 25 degrees is the ideal angle and um, the flow rate was based on uh, some massive system. It was like 7,000 gallons a minute. Um, this one, uh, our water potential in the creek is somewhere around 150 to 200 gallons a minute um, in the best season. So um, it gets down to like 50 gallons a minute at some points of the year. So we'll just see how well that works. Um, and also, before we get started, I looked into the really old Archimedes screws, the ones that were made from wood, and uh, how they were made. Let's just use some scrap pieces here. Imagine yeah, these were the same length, and a hole was drilled through the very center of them, and there were a stack of a few hundred of these. You would then offset just a little bit and keep going and it would make a helical shape as they went up. Um, and then they would have uh, some boards in between to kind of make a larger uh, center shaft. Um, but anyway, uh, my thoughts on that is if for some reason this plastic auger that I have inside of this pipe doesn't work out, we may try building our own out of wood. Or I was thinking wood might swell. Um, so we could maybe use something like PVC boards. But anyway, we'll get to that if the time comes. I don't know what it is about me and water projects in the middle of winter, but it is cold out here. So this has been sitting in the creek for four years. I was able to get the set screw on this end to loosen up, um, but it is still uh, locked on there pretty good. I just want to see if I could, oh man. This may be a self-leveling. I don't know how I'm going to get this off of here. I wonder if I tapped it on more, if it would then loosen up to come off. I'm going to work on this for a bit and see what I can do. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes of working. I used uh, some WD-40 on there, and I think we are home free. Oh. 
I just let you know when it's off. Okay, didn't take much more to get it off of there. Uh, now this video is gonna become one of those widely popular uh, videos on how to repair some old part, <laughs> which actually is not a bad idea. So, uh, it's got a lot of grease that's come out of there, I suppose. But uh, it seems to be in decent shape. Um, still sp uh, spins fairly freely. Just needs some some re-greasing, I do believe. But anyway, I think I'm gonna just kind of clean this up a bit. Uh, it seems like it's it's not rusted in there, more than just a little cosmetic stuff. Um, so it'd be nice if I could get the other one off, but with that set screw. Uh, broken in there basically. I don't know what I'm gonna be able to do with it. Okay, well I just realized on this piece there are two set screws. I'm not sure how I missed that, but uh, that may be one of the reasons I couldn't get the other one off down at the other end. But anyway, let's go ahead and knock this pipe loose here and see what the auger looks like. Probably the moment you've been waiting for. That's a big old T. All right, so uh, let's see. I guess we'll have to knock that side off as well because this auger is going that way and the pipe is coming this way. Okay, nice. Let's see how we can get this thing out of here. I don't want to have to open the door and let my heat out, but I may have to. It may be just long enough that it won't fit out of here. Aha, nope. Got it. Oh man, so close. <laughs> yeah, there we go, okay. Nice. So it must be maybe nine foot. Anyway, cool. So we got that out. Let me show you what this auger looks like real quick. This auger came from a company called Lundell, and uh, it's all these little sections here pieced together to make one full piece. And uh, here is where it is combined. So let's find out what the length is of each of those pieces. Like I said in the previous video, had I known there would be just enough flex right here in the middle, I would have gotten, let's see if I can show it. No, not really. Maybe there's not as much as I thought there was. Um, but anyway, you can see stuff is getting stuck between the pipe and the auger there and causing issues. But anyway, uh, so the length here, if we go from like maybe here, So close. Oh, come on. Okay, actually it's five foot. So yeah, it is 10 foot sections. Um, so yeah, we got 10 foot auger here and uh, two five foot sections. Uh, so okay, let's start from this end. This shaft here goes up into a piece that is uh, octagonal. And I had to shave off some of this to get it to fit into the T. And then I actually had to shave off about a quarter inch of the entire auger to get it to fit into the six inch pipe. Had I known, I probably would have uh, tried to make my own custom pipe at that point. Um, but anyway, so all this has been shaved off and I'm sure there are plenty of inconsistencies looking down there. Like it looks like this one right here may be uh, less shaved than others. Um, and it's probably true because there's not as much shavings on there. And to be honest, maybe the reason I'm hearing friction in the middle is because I didn't shave that one as much and it's right there in the middle. Anyway, that's just me talking. Uh, but the plan now is to take our pipe and use a little piece of uh, angle iron here to make a line down it and maybe I should just cut 
one pe one strip with the angle grinder and try to stuff it with something. I don't know. We're just playing around at this point. Um, see what we can do. Okay, I set this down on the ground and now you can see the flex that happens here at the joint. Um, it's decent. So I don't know if there's any way that I would be able to keep that from happening other than just take this piece out and only have a five foot auger instead of a 10 foot because that's going to be enough sag to hit no matter what I do unless I had some kind of um, leveling uh, bearing in there but when I do that it's going to break that connection so there's going to be at least a, um, uh, a one loss of piece here as uh, you make that connection but anyway let's just press on and see what we can do with this pipe as uh, separating it a little bit to give it more uh, space in there to be honest with you I think I'm gonna end up making my own custom chute for this but we know that T comes out to here so let's move up just a little bit um, the reason I'm using this angle iron is because it doesn't shift and you can get a straight line so I'm gonna come back enough to maybe give it enough strength here and just begin drawing a line across the pipe. And I'm gonna use an angle iron or angle grinder to cut this line. And I think I can come back with some uh, maybe some very short bolts. Uh, and maybe separate this with a hammer or something or a crowbar and stick bolts in here a couple places to open this up by about a quarter inch or so. But I'm going to go down the line here and match this and then we'll use the angle grinder to cut this open. Yeah, I'm making it all the way through so I'm just going to run down the line here and to get this whole thing split up. Okay, the line has been cut through there. Now I've just got a screwdriver. I want to see if I could maybe come up a few inches here and maybe pry this open. I don't want the rest of the pipe to split all the way in two. Let's see what I can do here. Okay. And so what I'm thinking, I've just got a couple of nuts. Let's try this here first. Because I was uh, thinking it can't go all the way through or it will have a uh, issue or conflict with touching the, uh, the auger. So let's try that. That's in there pretty tight. And I'm just gonna move down uh, to the next maybe halfway mark down here and uh, try it again. And anyway, it's just going to open this thing up about a quarter of an inch. At least that's the plan. See if I can do this without dropping any of these down in there. And we will just give this auger a test in here. Okay, there are four different nuts in here now separating this thing. Obviously, it's not a very good permanent solution, but I think it will at least give us a test uh, whether or not this is going to work. So let's push the auger back in here and see if it spins. We've got the auger back in here now. Let's go ahead and just give this a test and see what we think. So it's better just from being open. Now I know that there's no uh, flange here holding it up any but to be honest with that sag in the middle I don't see that being uh, a help like this is actually up already so yeah I don't know so I think it's going to be too inefficient because of that uh, sag there so where the two pieces combine it looks just like this there is a uh, the octagonal shaped piece in there with a bolt coming through. So what I might be able to do is break this apart 
into uh, a five foot section, which is not as ideal, but it will be balanced. Um, so there won't be that middle sag there. And that way what we can do is go ahead and maybe, I guess I just use this top one up here since this is uh, locked in there pretty good. And if I can, I'll get that set screw out somehow. Um, I don't know if this screwdriver is big enough or is going to fit in that groove that I made. No, I'd have to make it a little bit bigger. Oops. Out of focus. Anyway, in the last video, I tried cutting a groove in there to get a screwdriver in, but it's not quite working out yet. Okay, so, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and just scrap the idea of using the full 10 foot. I've seen augers that have generated enough power to run LEDs that were only about three foot long. So um, let's try that with a five foot and uh, we'll go from there. So my plan now is to continue to use this auger for a few more tests. I'd like to get it good enough to go out into the water and actually have some water flow through it and see what happens. But then I'm really psyched, psyched, stoked. <laughs> I'm really stoked to try out the idea of making um, an auger myself, probably out of something like this that won't expand, um, but we'll see. Uh, maybe I could just use uh, two by fours. It'd be heavy, but we might be able to get it done. Um, okay, I've got some more projects to do today, so we're gonna stop at this point. Um, a little bit disappointing for the friction that's still in there, but that right there, is not going to generate much power at all because of the uh, the loss. So what I may want to do, yeah, I'll probably take this same pipe, cut it, um, cut the top third out of it maybe, and um, I guess try just a single section of this. Oh, what I was getting at is um, I can remove this lower shaft here by unscrewing this bolt and um, taking this piece up to this one and just have a short auger inside of a short pipe here. Um, so that's the plan uh, from here on out. So thank you so much for watching. This series is probably going to last for a while um, because uh, I'm just playing around. So I hope you are enjoying it. If you are, hit that thumbs up button and uh, be sure to subscribe if you would like to stay up to date on this project. And of course, there are uh, over a thousand videos on the channel um, also. But thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.